Flat optics is a new field of optics where you don't use the refractive uh, properties of materials and uh, light propagation, uh, but focus on very strong sub-wavelength patterned uh, layers where <coughs> many small elements um, collectively work to manipulate the, the light. So these structures are between 20 nanometers to a couple of hundred nanometers. And typically for a single optical functions, there are hundreds to thousands of, or sometimes even tens of thousands of these small elements. Flat optics is a area that is really rich with opportunities. It's a very different way of guiding light and making light do tricks and things that with bulk optics we've never really imagined were possible and really with bulk optics it isn't very possible so flat optics is something that we all can relate to in the semiconductor industry as to how to manufacture it because it's just making small things on glass and on other substrates um, so if we can use those uh, those um, devices to manipulate optical wavefronts in ways that we haven't been able to do before, that's what makes it so exciting. It's very clear that metasurfaces um, can go beyond the limits of what these type of optics can do. And especially with the advent of active metasurfaces that can essentially operate like a spatial light modulator with unprecedented uh, speeds and, and resolution. We're talking about a completely new class of opportunities unique to metasurfaces. The field of metasurfaces is evolving from you know, more of a fundamental science to, um, you know, a, a translatable you know, solution for a variety of problems spanning, you know, communications, um, biosensing, um, AR, VR, uh, you know, active um, devices like uh, tunable beam steers. Uh, so I was really impressed, um, not only at the quality of fundamental research that was presented, but um, a lot of the themes that pointed to how metasurfaces can provide solutions that can be translated into products. I think, um you know, flat optics, metamaterials for, for optical wave lengths are kind of like the transistor business circa mid 1950s, just coming out of Bell Labs. Um, you know, there are these potential killer applications on the on the horizon, some of them which are closer than not. But, uh, you know, the future, excuse the pun, is bright. Um, I, I think the most obvious ones are, are the ones uh, um, that depend on uh, consumer applications at scale, you know, uh, engineered waveguides for AR glasses, uh, flat lenses for doing near infrared stuff, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, photonics, uh, and maybe some machine vision stuff. And and as I said, some of those uh, uh, biosensors uh, um, for uh, life sciences, while not obviously the size and scale in unit volume as uh, uh, as they are, uh, but certainly in dollar volume might be quite interesting. So, um, I, but uh, but I think we're just at the beginning of what we could do with this uh, with this technology. I think what they really bring and what they offer that very very few uh, companies can in the world today, and that is the ability to develop processes at that can control materials at the nanoscale. So yes, there's going to be lots of materials challenges, the substrates, the types of glasses used, etc. A very different um, processing uh, sequences and very different chemistry than conventional glass, for example, or silicon or whatever. But this is, this plays to applied strength.